Feb being a month of love, I know it triggers emotions of loneliness, especially when you are single and you desire to be in a relationship. And because of that, I decided to do an episode of encouragement to my single sisters. Hi, my name is Doreen and on this channel I share content related to women wellness and well-being and the topics include but they are not limited to self-care, beauty and fashion, relationships, uh, marriage, homemaking, motherhood, parenting and all that. Yeah, if you like such topics or if you're into such information, please hit the subscribe button and join the family. If you've subscribed, thank you so much for subscribing. Make sure you share the videos with your friends and with your sisters, uh, with your loved ones, so that they can learn a thing or two as we are on a quest to grow and be the best versions of ourselves as ladies. So as you can see from the thumbnail, in this uh, video, I'm going to share a few lessons or write like a letter to my single sisters telling them the things that personally I went through and also other people have gone through and I hope that you can learn a thing or two. One of the things that I would advise a lady that is looking for marriage is do not focus on things that are not important. Uh, write a list of things that uh, you would want in a spouse and of course you have the non-negotiables uh, as a Christian, for example, one of the non-negotiables is you cannot date someone that is not a Christian in that you will not be equally yoked. The Bible says that we should not be equally unequally yoked. So that is one of the non-negotiables. If you've been in relationships, you've also seen the things that the people had that were not good for you, that did not serve you. So all those things, you, you, you know, you write down the things that you feel like will serve you. I think that is one of the things that I used when I was choosing a spouse. I looked at the things that were in my previous relationships that I didn't like and made sure that the person that I end up with does not have those things. Also, if you've not been in relationships, you have seen people who are who have gone through relationships you know the things that they have gone through as a christian some of the things that should be on your list is the person should be a christian they should be kind they should be compassionate they should be generous they should be caring look out for you physical attraction can also be there it can be one of the things that you would want in a person but it should not be the core value like it should not be the upper the, the top of the list. You know the Bible says that beauty fades, but a good heart stays, good character stays. So focus on the character of the person, focus on the heart of the person. If it is an added advantage that they are beautiful or they are handsome, well and good. And then also when you get into that relationship, you should feel peace. Like that is one of the ways you know that this person is a good person for you. You feel peace that surpasses all understanding. You feel safe, or at least that's how I feel. Yeah. So that is one of the things that I would advise you as a single lady looking to be in a relationship. Another thing that we've heard so many times is do not ignore the red flags. So sometimes as ladies over 30, we start being desperate. So anything that comes or like I'm waiting for anyone or anything that comes and I'll be in a relationship, I'll be like my friends, I'll get married and be like my friends, my friend. Okay? It's better for you to stay single a little while longer than getting married to someone who is going to disturb you or give you hell the rest of your life. So look at those red fl flags. If someone shouts at waitresses, if someone slaps other people, let me tell you something. That slap one of these days, soon or later, will land on your face. So look at those red flags and, you know, flee from those relationships before they even start that is why they say that you should be friends with the person if you're friends with the person you'll have already seen these character traits in them you will have already understood and realized that you know what i don't think this is for me yeah so be friends with the person hang out with the person in a group setting or alone and you study like eh? you study the person so that you can understand if this is the person that you want to live with for the rest of your life not every born again is for you so i said in the first point that you should not be equally unyoked you should not be unequally yoked and then you're like you know what doreen i'll go for any believer no 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 not every born again is for you because there are some people who are 
politically inclined so meaning that if you're not that kind of person if you're not a kind of person who wants to get involved in politics that person may not be for you if you want to live a quiet life and all that person may not be for you you may meet some people who are you know for the, for the for that guy that person you have met does not mind sitting at home and being a stay at home husband so that you can go and work and man for you in your life you want to be a baby girl so that person is not for you because you want someone who will go out there and win the bread for the family yeah so not every born again is for you another lesson that i would give is adapt to your dynamic be open to new ways of meeting new people so probably at church you've not met anyone or no one has noticed you you can be open to go on social media and follow pages like christian pages maybe as you you know like the posts comment on the posts maybe there could be someone who would you know resonate with your spirit and maybe they can slide in your dm and the relationship can start from there i have had stories i have seen stories where people you know met on social media and their marriages are, are thriving uh you can go for those church gatherings or those hangouts you meet with obis and ogs you know, don't refuse to go for those networking events, you know. Maybe that is a way that God planned that you'll meet your spouse. Your neighbor back at home could be your husband or your wife. Another thing is do not brother zone people. Don't brother zone guys. I know us as Christian ladies, we are always brother zoning guys. You know, someone is interested in you, but you have brother zoned them. And you're now 35 the person can't come anymore. The person probably moved on to another person and you're there thinking, you're like, Kale, why did I brother zone this guy? We could be together now. Yeah, so if someone is not your brother, your biological brother, do not brother zone guys. Be open, you know, be open to them. I think that is one of the things that helped me. I tried not to brother zone other people that were in fellowship with because I met my husband in fellowship. We did not start dating until later on, but I did not brother zone him. Like I was already seeing potential. I'm like, mm, if he comes and asks me out, I'm open to, you know, accepting. Yeah, so do not brother zone other believers, other Christian guys. Also on the point of marrying a friend, it is very important that, okay, if you're already in the relationship and maybe you did start off as friends, you can do activities together that you both like, you know, you can start afresh and ask the person, what do you like? What don't you like? Uh, so that you can be friends because sometimes love is absent not that it's absent but it is low and friendship is what is going to maintain you as the love grows or as the love increases you know i don't know if you understand that so if you're friends with a person even if you had an argument and something good happens to you you want to call your friend and when you call that friend and you talk about that achievement that you've gotten or that a uh, bad thing that has happened together and before you know it the argument even resolves itself yeah so it's important to be friends with the person that you marry or you can cultivate the friendship and then another thing as single ladies that i want you to ask yourself is are you the person that the person you're looking for is looking for or are you becoming the person that the person you're looking for is looking for you know you may be looking at a guy and you think that eh, that guy should ask me out because of the qualities that you've seen in him uh the character is good he's god fearing he serves god uh he's loving he's caring uh he's wholesome you know he's a whole package but that person is not looking at you because your character is not, you know, in line with his character. Maybe the things that you're doing or the things that you're into are not in line with the things that I'm into. So it's very important to be on a journey of becoming what we want. If you want a caring person, be caring. If you want a kind person, be kind. If you want a born again Christian, be born again, you know. So I, would, I want to ask you this again. Are you the person that the person you're looking for is looking for? Also... I want you to appreciate the broken road that you are on right now because it is building resilience. It is building character. You know, it is uh, equipping you with tools and skills to be able to enjoy the relationship that God is going to bless you with. 
a singer sang and said may god bless the broken roads that led me straight to you so you've probably broken up with someone and you've just broken up and valentine's is coming and you're like how am i going to navigate this you know yeah so thank god that you did not continue with that bad relationship you identified that you own, you do not want to be in this anymore you know you learned your lesson god bless those roads those broken roads that lead us to our husbands you know i always look back on myself and i'm thinking like ah, if i'd ended up in that relationship huh i don't know how my life would be i don't think my life would be as good as it is na right now or if i'd married the other guy oh my god i don't know what i would be fighting right now yeah so if you're single mainly because you have broken up with someone or no one has come to you yet to ask you out it is well it is well god is building you god is molding you molding someone you know is like shedding off all the bad things it's painful to mold it's painful it's hurtful but the end result the final piece is always looking beautiful so when god is done with working with you and presents you to your husband oh my god it will be a beautiful thing it will be a beautiful relationship to unfold it will be a beautiful life ahead so be encouraged in knowing that whatever is not working right now is for your good one of the things that i want to beg you to do is enjoy your singlehood guys enjoy your singlehood be content in your singlehood travel the world get your passport go and travel the world go on solo dates go on group dates uh, uh go for that spa treatment go for that massage uh like do things that pour into you enjoy your singlehood to the maximum because if you don't enjoy this season of life when marriage comes marriage has its own ups and downs uh parenthood has its own ups and downs you may not be as free as you were when you are single so make sure you enjoy your singlehood one of the things that i did when i was single that you can do is to focus on self growth and development so this includes uh, but is not limited to you can read books read as many books as you can because you have all the time in your in the world without distractions you can write a book you be an author <laughs> Yeah, another thing that you can do is go for your masters or go do those professional courses that will advance you in your career. Work on growing your career, you know, as you're single because you have no distractions. You have no things that would deter you from that journey of rising to the top. Another thing that you can do is make and invest your money build an emergency fund work on your finances uh, build an asset portfolio invest in different things invest in different ventures you know while you're still single this helps you to know to choose a partner from brokenness you know you can choose someone because they are financing your lifestyle because they are giving you money you know and you end up settling for only that and you ignore all the other red flags that we have to, we had talked about but when you have your money you have made your money you can look after yourself you can finance anything that you want for yourself you know it doesn't cloud your judgment when you're looking at this person you look at them in, with clear eyes you know you see their motives clearly without them uh, blurring their motive with the money that they have sent to you and then work on your relationship with god that is like the most important thing when you are single you are your mind is free like you have all the time in the world work on your relationship with god develop and grow your relationship with god put in place structures and strategies of how to stay connected to god pray go for overnights fast uh read the word serve at church join all those serving ministries and serve at church build god's kingdom when you are single it's important that you serve god diligently when you're single i know you've had this saying that serve god when you're still single i know you have heard it me i'm experiencing it right now yeah so invest in your relationship with god now so that when a different season comes you'll be able to reap from the investments that you made before that particular season as you work on building also the, in this season that you are in and then when god finally presents your mate to you 
uh, use that time of courtship or dating to gather information, uh, know about the person, know about their family. Do they have any chronic diseases in their family? What are their generational issues? So that you can pray from a point of information, like you know what you are praying about. And if God so desires that you continue with this relationship, even this, after discovering all these things, I know God will give you a way of how to navigate everything that comes your way. Yeah, but do not use dating dating phase for mating or free marital sex. But because sex, you know, sex clouds your judgment. You miss out the red flags that you are supposed to see. Yeah, so do it. Date with a clear mind as you gather information about the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. And then be expectant. One day, some day soon, God is bringing your mate. Don't give up on life. Don't give up, give up on relationships. Allow God to do what only he can do. And as you're expectant and waiting, uh, Valentine's is coming, you can go for dates with the girls. Eh? Yeah, my friends and I, we used to go for Galentines. We used to call it Galentines. Like on 15th, we'd go for a date as girls. You know, we go, we hang out, have dinner, celebrate ourselves. Yeah, so you can do that as you wait for your mate to come. Yeah, so that is it for this video. I hope you have been encouraged with the words that I've shared with you, the lessons that I learned from my own personal experiences during the single time, the dating time, and now that I'm married, I'm married the comparisons uh, that I've given you uh, for dating and marriage. And I hope that you're expectant for when your spouse or your partner comes your way. Yeah, so that is it for this episode. Uh, let's continue to uplift, encourage, and motivate each other to be the best versions of ourselves. See you in the next one. Bye.